We made it to Pakistan! Yeah! <laughs> we took four flights to get here. From San Francisco to Istanbul, Turkey, to Islamabad, Pakistan, and finally, Skardu. Here you can see on the map, starting in the U.S., we flew over and right all the way to Pakistan, a country surrounded by China, India, Afghanistan, and Iran. For most of our trip, we stayed in the northern area, which is where all the beautiful mountains are. But first, why did we even go to Pakistan? Well, we have an app called POW that's all about exploring the coolest spots around the world. And three of our programmers actually live in Islamabad, Pakistan. Their coworker invited us to his wedding and we knew we had to go and meet everyone for the first time. So after hours of traveling, we finally got to our destination. And within the next few hours, we had lost a bag, I was interviewed for National Pakistan TV, and some girl came up to us and asked us to be in her TikTok video. But what we didn't realize was she was actually famous on TikTok, and our videos with her got hundreds of thousands of views. It was a crazy two-day travel experience, but we finally got to sleep. We woke up in the absolutely stunning Shangri-La Hotel, one of the most iconic hotels in the region as it features mountain and lake views right outside your room. Next, it was time to set out on our day with our travel guide, Zahir, our driver, and our coworker, Wasim. Zahir took us to his village and his family's home, where they cooked us a massive lunch of homemade traditional food. They were some of the nicest people we've ever met, so hospitable, and so excited that we were there. It was a really, really special moment for us. We got back in the car and the wind started picking up as we went to our next spot. We turned off the main road, went through the sand, and ended up at the highest cold desert in the world. Climbing up the dunes was not easy, but the view was absolutely nuts. Hard to see because of the wind, but there were massive mountains surrounding all of the dunes. We had a blast running around. Of course they had me model on the car too. After a long day, it was time to head to our next hotel and get a good night's rest. This morning, we woke up in Shigar Fort, a beautiful fort that was renovated into a hotel. The grounds are so relaxing and located next to a raging river. The breakfast was awesome. Make sure to try the French toast and fresh peach juice. Next, our coworker Wasim surprised us with a visit to his family's home, which is over 500 years old. They made us a massive breakfast spread on top of the breakfast we already had, and it was so good. We felt so lucky to see where one of Powell's programmers actually grew up. It was time to hit the road again and make our way to our next stop, Deosai National Park. This park is massive and filled with mountains, lakes, and crazy views. It is super popular to camp here. And there's even a tent set up with a kitchen inside if you get hungry. We ordered some chicken curry, rice, and chickpeas, and it was some of the best food I had the whole trip. Oh, and if you go to Deosai, make sure you have a four-wheel drive car. You'll be driving through some pretty crazy terrain. As we drove, we came across what would soon be one of my favorite parts of Pakistan, their trucks. Instead of having boring old loader trucks, all of their trucks are painted by local Pakistani artists. I became completely obsessed with them, and one even gave us a little ride on the front. So freaking cool.
The next day, we woke up in the PTDC Rama Hotel, known for its beautiful grounds and wooden architecture. Right near the hotel is the trailhead for a fun hike to a super pretty lake. One negative we noticed about Pakistan is there is tons of pollution. So if you end up going, try and take some trash with you. Just to show people that what's going on. This is your own property, so don't pollute it. Yes. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> Our next stop was one my mom had been dreading for weeks. We basically had to take a drive on the second most dangerous road in the world to do probably the hardest hike we've ever done. Any final words before we go into the Jeep? Most of them are swear words. Okay. So probably shouldn't say them on whatever public situations. Okay. All right. Ask me later. You may enter. Who decided to do this? I did. Yep. It was me. <laughs> doesn't look like it, but this is a two-lane road, made up of dirt and rocks with a 6,000-foot drop-off. It was beyond terrifying, but the boys loved it, and of course, they had to do a little photo shoot. Well, we made it. We're alive. Definitely one of the scarier things we've ever done in our lives. We can't even, I actually can't talk about it. It was a lot. We said our goodbyes at one point. Yeah, we said, we said I love you. Uh, yep. And but we're here. And yes, we do have to do the same thing going back. back down. But it's okay. We don't have to deal with that for another two days. We finished the day with a hike up to where we were sleeping for the night. In the morning, we woke up to the most insane view of Nanga Parbat, also known as Killer Mountain. It has a 22% kill rate for those who try and climb it. We definitely did not want to try that, but we decided to hike to the base camp. Before we left, we got interviewed again, and then set out on our adventure. Yes. These are the mighty glaciers. Nanga Parbat, 8,600 meter height at the sea level. Thank you. <laughs> Do you want to have any last words before the summit? We've come this far. We have to finish it. But it's going to suck. But it'll be rewarding. How are they running up? This is not okay. Screw them. Man down. <laughs> Two minutes in. <laughs> How are we feeling? <laughs> are you alive? Yeah. <laughs> so. Okay. <laughs> The next day, we woke up very sore and had to make the trek down to the Jeep and then the drive back to town. We're back. 
After making it out alive, it was time to head to the largest city in the northern area for some food. What you got, Anna? I found pizza. In Pakistan. And how does that make you feel? Well, it's good. <laughs> we then sampled some local foods, including their version of a snow cone, but they get their ice from the glaciers. We tried some fruit, some fried street food, and then we went to the river in town to cool off. The next morning, we woke up in the Hunza Dunbar Hotel with a 360 view of the mountains from not only our room, but from breakfast and from their rooftop. We then set out to our first stop of the day, Lake Ataba. This lake had the most turquoise water I've ever seen in my life. You can see it from the top or go down to the water and even take a boat ride if you want to. The driver. They let me drive to our next stop, and it was my first time driving on the right side of the car and on the left side of the road. I think I did pretty good. Our next stop was Husani Bridge, what used to be one of the most dangerous bridges in the world until they renovated it. Only the local people are allowed to cross it, but they let my mom walk out a little bit for a picture. We met some of the local ladies, and they were absolutely amazing. I even told one of them I thought she was beautiful, and she replied, I know, freaking badass. Thank you. <laughs> How are you? <laughs> bye, bye. Bye, bye. Bye, bye. bye, bye. <laughs> Our final stop of the day was one of my favorites of the whole trip, the Pasu Cones. This mountain range is shaped like cones and so breathtaking the pictures and videos don't do it justice. We were so excited we did the Pasu Cone Dance. The next day, it was finally time to head back to Islamabad for the wedding. Pakistani weddings are traditionally three days long, filled with fun traditions and celebrations. We ate so much food, saw beautiful decorations, stunning outfits, money throwing, and even some horse dancing. Even though the hiking and mountains were stunning, our favorite part of the whole trip was the people. I can honestly say in all of my travels to more than 40 countries, I've never felt so welcomed and safe. Just walking down the street, people would come up to me and shake my hand and thank me for coming to their country. Some even gave me presents without even knowing me. Pakistan is nothing like it's shown on the news, and everyone I talked to said to me, get your friends to come visit us too. So I hope you put Pakistan on your travel list. And if you want to save all the spots that I went to on my trip, download the POW app on the iPhone now.